Praise the Lord. You may be seated in Jesus' name. We want to welcome everyone to Mount Olive Apostolic Church, the headquarters of Church of General Assembly for Lord Jesus Christ, Apostolic. Thanking you all for taking the time to be here with us in the midst of our annual National Holy Convocation 2023. Praise God. Can you please observe the following? Turn off mobile phone or put them on silence during the service. Where possible, refrain from walking down the aisles during the ceremony. Toilet, toilet location at the rear. One on the right, one on the back, on the left. Of the church, both sides, upstairs as well, and the ushers will basically assist you if you need assistance. In the case of emergencies, the fire exit are at the front and the back of the church. The ushers will also assist you should the need arise. Today is a notable and special day in the history of General Assembly. We have come today. To witness the installation of the third presiding bishop of General Assembly of our Lord Jesus Christ Apostolic. In the person of Bishop Floyd Downey. Let us pray that the Lord will continue to lead us, bless and guide him continually as we invoke the praise of the Lord in this place today. Praise the Lord. This is going to stand. We're going to sing our first congregation song, I Surrender All.
Bishop C.T. Richards, praise God, of Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, Apostolic UK, to come with a prayer now in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let us pray. Righteous God and our Father, the giver of life, the only contentate, Jesus Christ the righteous, we come at this time. Lord, we come because thou art our eternal hope and thou art the God of our salvation. Thou art the peace that passeth all understanding, that keep our hearts and our minds stayed on you. We come at this time, especially for this occasion in which we gather. We come, God, to celebrate this high office of our brother dedicated to this office. We come this evening, God, to lift up your name and to give you thanks and praise you and honor you for such an occasion. We ask you, God, that you will bless every heart that is in this building. We ask you at this time for a revival in this service. That as we come this evening, every soul will look to you, knowing that thou art a great God, a God who loves and cares, and a God who understands. We put your servant into your hand at this time. O oh Lord God, coming into this office, one that he might have done before, but God, there is an elevation, and so greater works are put on him to do at this time. I ask you for the added strength that is you will give unto him. O oh Lord God, please come to him at this time. His wife also I ask that you will touch her as she standeth beside him. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the power of your sanctifying hand be upon him at this time. Bless him, keep him, and all those that he will lead. Oh God, it will be a pleasant leading as he leads them to victory. I ask that you will continue to bless every heart, bless every soul, bless every mind, and every thought that shall be gendered tonight. Let the peace of God reign, and so God, we give you praise, honor, and thanks at this time. While we say, thank you, God, leaving everything into your hand, into your care at this time, in the name of Jesus Christ, and for Jesus' sake, amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, let's worship the Lord Jesus, hallelujah. The Lord Jesus. The holy angels is here to witness this occasion today. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We're going to sing our second conversation, our song, He Rolled the Sea Away. Praise the Lord. He Rolled the Sea Away. Hallelujah.
it's a, it's a crystal this time.
Nobody told me that the road may be easy. Come on, nobody told me that the road will be easy. But I believe he brought me, don't brought me this far to leave me. Let the church praise the Lord. Let the church praise the Lord. Let the church praise the Lord. Praise him again. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, I'm depending on you. Jesus, oh, I'm depending on you. Jesus, I'm depending on you. Depending on you to see me through. Praise God to the pulpit with an homily at this time. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. 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 It's indeed an honor to be in the house of the Lord. And we give God all the praise and the glory to be in this special occasion 
the anointing uh, of the man of God tonight. We magnify the Lord and we bless the Lord for his life. It is indeed an honor for me to be here. It's an honor before the King, the Most High God, the Most High God. Come on, somebody, the Most High. Hallelujah. So, first of all, to the General Assembly of our Lord Jesus Christ, Apostolic Faith. I bring you greetings from the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ and to um, our Bishop, the Honorable Bishop Floyd Downey. Let us put our hands together for him. His wife, come on, put your hands together for his wife, his, his children, come on. Clap those hands, somebody. Clap those hands. His family. I see his sister, Sonia, the artist and mother. Thank you. His brother, Mark. Everyone, the entire body, this august body of people. Such a great legacy tonight. Such a great legacy. This is, this place is no strange place for me. It's been many years coming here and I rejoice and I thank God for our relationship, the fellowship that never died. And uh, Bishop Hamilton is here. Thank God for you, sir. Everyone, my wife, the saints of, some of the saints of the church where our Lord Jesus Christ are here. Is this, no, is not this the fast that I've chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke? And therefore, saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the man of Egypt. For yet a very little while and the indignation shall cease and mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And his rod was upon the sea so shall he lift it up after the man of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. For now will I break his yoke from off thee and I will burst Thy bonds in sunder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I said, it's indeed an honor to stand before you in this convention with this powerful theme, legacy. Very, very important, powerful legacy. God gives us our Lessons to learn gives us lessons. God gives us tests to pass. And um, my brother, great friend, Bishop Floyd Downey, he said he really wanted me to be here because of this long standing relationship we have. And God recognizes your potential. 
way back from the beginning. It was in the blueprint that you be here this evening. Hallelujah. Because he knew us before. We knew ourselves. He saw your faithfulness and he saw he could trust you. You were trustworthy. He saw the vision. He saw that you were a visionary leader and you're a man of responsibility. God's decision, it is God's decision when he is to advance you. And today is the day he's going to end this under this cloud of witnesses. A cloud of witnesses. He is advancing you at this time. It is God's will to place us where we're needed and you're needed here. You are the appointed one. Like David out of the field, God has placed you here right now. Whatever it is, God will provide for you. God has a purpose for your life. And you are responsible for discovering God's purpose. You're responsible for fulfilling God's purpose. Joshua chapter 1, I believe, has something to do. Something to say. From verse 6, it says, Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto your fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong, and of a good courage, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Hallelujah. Just for a few minutes, I want you to imagine everyone living a life without fear, to be fearless. It means that obstacles will come, challenges will come. But the scripture mentions courage. Courage is an absence of fear. You're not going to fear. It's an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain, or harm. Terror, fright, fearfulness, panic, agitation, trepidation, dread distress. Fear can be paralyzing. Believers have no need to be slaves to fear. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father. For God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power 
and of love and of a sound mind. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Come on, somebody. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me, because he's my helper. The Lord is the, my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah. Who's God talking to tonight? You possess and have the potential and capacity to lead this people. Hallelujah. You're a great leader. Good followers become great leaders. And we saw the way you followed the late Apostle Jeff Downey, your father. Hallelujah. With humility and the principle of honor. You honored your father at all times. Leadership is about movement. There's going to be a movement right now. God's hand is upon you. And you've got to take this people from the wilderness to a place that God has promised. Out of your pain, your hurts, you will, be, you will birth goals and pain produces growth. True leaders never keep people where they are. You're gonna, he's going to take the people, take you with him. You're going to move into a land of promise. Come on, I don't know who I'm talking to. I know this, this people. Hallelujah. You can see the vision. You can see everything that God is doing at this time. Hallelujah. Agreement. You've got to be in agreement with the man of God. Agreement is in, a, in the place of power. Hallelujah. You've got to make a conscious decision that you will follow your leader. You will stand by your leader just as you did for Apostle Downey. You're going to do the same for Bishop Floyd Downey. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, Mount Olive. Give God a praise right now. We're going to stand by the man of God. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes leading is about discomfort. And you may not feel, or you may not be able to take what's going on, but you need to stand by the man of God. Hallelujah. There's a holy discontent should make you want to do something. When you're dissatisfied and you cannot believe the things that it makes you want to do something positive. Hallelujah. Leading is about discomfort. It makes you uncomfortable. Leadership is about crisis, conflict, pushing you to make a change. Hallelujah. You have to be willing to die for what you are, for your conviction. For, to make change you have got to be willing to die for it refuse hallelujah to believe people's opinion of you bishop hallelujah it's not about their opinion it's about what God is saying about you hallelujah you have to the capacity to, to influence conditions and I am believe you're fearless and I will just, I believe it's just a few minutes I have here. But the Lord told Joshua, look, Moses, my servant, is dead. Hallelujah. My servant Moses is dead. But now, Joshua, you were Moses' minister. But now I'm about to elevate you. I'm about, this is about succession. This is about taking you to another place. And you've got to realize it's time. It's time for you to go over this Jordan. There's a path that you have to take. There's a Jordan that you have to cross. Hallelujah. I feel God moving right now. I feel God saying something right now. Hallelujah. And Moses, we, uh, unto, God is going to take you unto the land which I do give them. 
even to the children of Israel. Every place that you place your the sole of your feet shall so that your foot shall tread upon. Hallelujah. I've given it unto you. Hallelujah. As I've said unto Moses, and I've said unto Apostle Downey, you will walk on places and land where I promise. Hallelujah. You're now the man that stepped into that era. Hallelujah. You now stepped into that place. Uh, do I just have a few more minutes? Every place from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river of Euphrates, all of these things, the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. And as I was with Moses, as I was with your father, I will be with you. Hallelujah. I will be with you. Hallelujah. I will, I will not fail you. I will not be forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. All I want you to do is to hold on to the manual. Hold on to the script. Hallelujah. Hold on to the law that I've given you. Meditate upon it day and night. I will be with you. I will strengthen you. I will give you courage. Give it everything you have now. Everything you have in you right now. You've got to give this work. You've got to give this everything you have. Make sure you carry out every instruction. Hallelujah. Every command. Come on, church. Come on. I believe that God is speaking to somebody in here right now. Hallelujah. Everything that's in you, every bit in you, don't get off track. Don't be sidetracked. Hallelujah. Don't deviate. Just make sure you get where you're going. I believe something's happening here right now. Make sure you, you practice everything that you learn. Everything that's in this book. Everything that's written in the Bible. Make sure you practice everything written in it. Then you will get where you're going. Then you will succeed. Strength, courage. Don't be timid. Don't get discouraged. God, your God is with you. Hallelujah. He's with you. He's with you. Come on. He's with you. He's with you. Come on. He's with you. Hallelujah. He's with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's with you. He's with you. He will not leave you. Oh, forsake you. He will not leave you. Come on. Come on, church. Hallelujah. This is time we need to praise God now. We need to give God some glory now. Lift up your heads. Come on. Lift up your voices. I feel an anointing in this place. You're under an open heaven right now. Hallelujah to God. Give God some praise now. Hallelujah. I will keep you. That's what God is saying. I will, I will provide for you. I will open the windows of heaven for you. Somebody in here. I don't know. I don't know. But I know and I believe God. But God has done something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a fresh anointing in here. There's fresh oil in here. There's fresh fire in here. Somebody praise God. Somebody lift him up now. Hallelujah. 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 I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help. My help. Coming from the Lord. My help. Yeah. 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 Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You're with me, God. Everywhere I turn, you're with me. Hallelujah, God bless you.
Can somebody say hallelujah? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 
Timothy chapter number 4 verses 1 through to verses number 5. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come 
when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And what is your response? I will, by the grace of God, assist in me. Will you commit to lead this organization by being a personal example to this congregation committed to a life of holiness, abstaining from all practices that may jeopardize your witness, and spending and being spent for the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Colossians number chapter 3. Verse 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 15. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you, through, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 3. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being example to the flags. And what is your command? I will, by the grace of God, assist in me. Will you commit to lead this congregation by being a personal gospel witness in your own life? St. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Titus chapter 2, verse number 7. In all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. It's in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and verse 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things you. whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And what is your response? I will, by the grace of God, assist you. Will you determine to know nothing among this congregation but Jesus Christ and Him crucified, not coming with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and the power that God will get all the glory? 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse through to verse, verse 1, verse through to verse number five. And I, brethren, when I came to you, come not with excite, uh, enticing words of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, 
that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4 and verse 5. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with this gospel, even so we keep not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. For neither at any time use we flattering words, as ye know, not a cloak of covetousness. God is our witness. What is your response? I will, by the grace of God, assist in you. Will you commit yourself to loving this congregation by praying fervently for the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood and has now given you shepherd, to shepherd in this church? Acts chapter 20, verse number 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves, and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Second Chronicles, chapter number 7, verse number 14. If my people, Glory. which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Yes. Then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. Acts number 6, verse number 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministering of the word. What is your response? I will, by the grace of God, assist in you. Will you desire to love this congregation as a nursing mother cherishes her own children, imparting to them not only the gospel, but also your own life. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 7 and 8. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own soul, because ye were dear unto us. What is your response? I will, by the grace of God, assist in me. Will you do everything in your power to shepherd this flock, by protecting them from false teaching and false teachers. Titus chapter number 1 verse number 9. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. First Peter chapter number 5 verse 2 to 4. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he sh shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Acts chapter number 20, verse 28 through to verse 31. Take heed therefore unto yourselves, and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer. Yes, Feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Praise God. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, 
watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And what is your response? I will, by the grace of God, assist in me. Will you commit to being God's leader in your own home, teaching your family the things of God according to the scripture, by the word and deed, and leading them to love Christ and his church? First Timothy chapter number 3, verse 4 through to verse 5. One that ruleth well is house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man knoweth not how to rule his own house, how shall he care for the church of God? Joshua chapter 24, and verse number 15. And if it seems evil mm -hmm. unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom ye will serve. Yes. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorite in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, yes. we will serve the Lord. And what is your response? I will, by the grace of God, assisting me. Will you commit to give sacrificially of your time, resources, and energy to the work of the church, employing your spiritual gifts for the edification of the church and the exaltation of Jesus Christ? St. Matthew chapter number 6 verse 19 and 20. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Acts chapter 21 verse number 13. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter number 12 and verse number 11. But all these work it that one and the self same spirit Dividing to every man severally as he will. And what is your response? I will by the grace of God assist in me. Praise the Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Hallelujah. Praise Lord Jesus. At this time, I'm going to call the elders of General Assembly to come forward for the elder's declaration in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Elders, will ye commit to work with Bishop Floyd Downey, praying for him, honoring him as one who labors in word and doctrine for the good of our soul and recognizing him as a shepherd God has given us. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 12 to 13. And we beseech you, brethren, 
to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for the work's sake, and to be at peace among yourselves. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in word and doctrine. What is your response? We will, by the grace of God, assist in us. Elders, will you honor Bishop Floyd Downey and follow as you follow Christ, honoring him as Christ on the shepherd, ordained by God to keep watch over your souls? Will do this joy, will you do this with joy and not with groaning? First Corinthians eleven verse one Be ye followers of me even as I also am of Christ. Philippians 3, verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have as of an example. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Uh, with what is your response? We will, by the grace of God, assist in us. Elders, will you commit to stand alongside Bishop Floyd Downey, enacting church discipline in love for the purpose of individual and the collective restoration in honor of Christ and the purity of the church? Matthew 18, verses 15 to 18. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou shalt, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven also, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 20. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. Elders, what is your response? We will, by the grace of God, assist in us. Elders, will you commit to lay aside your personal preferences in order to strive for the unity of the church, desiring with all our actions to build up the body while forsaking all gossips, slanders, foolish talk, realizing that we will give an account to God for every idle word. Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse number 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit 
and the bond of peace. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 19. In the multitude of words there are wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth not his lips is wise. But he that refraineth his lips, I beg your pardon, is wise. First Timothy chapter 5 verse number 19. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Let not corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. Elders, what is your response? We will, by the grace of God, assist in us. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. I did say this is serious. Praise God. And at this time, praise the Lord Jesus. As we continue, we're now going to enter into a congregational declaration. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Congregational Declaration, St. Matthew chapter 23, verse 11 through to verse 12. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. First Thessalonians chapter one verse number three. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Once I have read this declaration, when it is time for your response, if you accept, then you may repeat, we will, by the grace of God, assisting us. People of God, Will you receive Bishop Floyd Sylvester Downey as a messenger of Jesus Christ sent to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation? What is your response? We will, by the grace of God, assist in us. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the ministries of God. People of God, will you regard him as a servant of Christ and a steward of the mysteries of God? What, what is your response? We will by the grace of God assist in us. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 12 through to verse 13 and we beseech you brethren to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their works sake and be at peace among yourselves will you pray for him help and honor him for his work's sake and in all things strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ. What is your response? We will, by the grace of God, in us. Glory be to God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God for the congregational 
declaration. At this time, praise God, praise God, we are going to bring forth the symbolic encumbrances in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. The staff. Romans 2 and verse 19. And are confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light to them which are in darkness. Hallelujah. The Bible. Romans 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have Hope. Glory to God. To you has been given the care of the bishops, elders, pastors, ministers, deacons, missionaries, mothers, the congregation and communities of this organization. General Assembly of our Lord Jesus Christ, Apostolic Faith. I ask you in the presence of God and this assembly will you assume the responsibility of presiding bishop and will you promise to be mindful to maintain a godly example of life before God and man and to otherwise conform to your vows of installation. What is your response? I will, by the grace of God, assist you. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, praise God, I'm going to ask the bishops that are present, praise the Lord Jesus, to come forward, to lay hands on this, the man of God, and to pray for him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. I said prayer changes things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We're nothing without you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. before you return to your seats I'm going to ask you praise God just to pray for the Downey family praise the Lord Jesus just to pray for the Downey family at this time in Jesus name hallelujah glory to God Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Presiding prelate 
of General Assembly of our Lord Jesus Christ Apostolic Bishop Floyd Sylvester Tell you in Jesus' name. soon coming king. Praise God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise God, I am that I am. Praise God, we give God thanks for his goodness, his mercy, 
Praise God for being here on such a solemn occasion. Praise God and giving God thanks that heaven has shined today. Praise God and the angels are rejoicing right now. Praise God and we are standing in the very presence of Almighty God. Praise God who is the head of our life. Praise God. He's the one that's in operation. He's the one that leads and directs. Praise God. He's the one that chooses. Praise God. His people before the foundation of the world. Praise God. I would say even before Bishop was conceived his mother's womb. Praise God. It was a day for him to be here right now. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. And no presence of evil, praise God, could prevent what happened today. Praise God. We give God thanks for the man of God. Praise God. Let's give him a round of applause again. Praise the wonderful man of Jesus. Praise God. There are times when God has a mark on somebody. Praise God. And it's visible throughout the life. Praise God. And God has selected our bishop, praise God, to be in this seat right now. Praise God. He has followed the legacy that was being laid down. Praise God by his late father, Apostle Downey. Praise God, who in turn also received this legacy from Bishop Malcolm. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. And we cannot forget him. Praise God. And we give God thanks. Praise God for the example that they have led and for the leadership. Praise God that I've led. We give God thanks for our bishop. Praise God that, praise God, even though this day has been waiting for a long time. Praise God. But I have a saying that nothing done before the time. Praise God. And we give God thanks to him the way that he, he has continued to lead the church of General Assembly. Praise God. And through the period of COVID, praise God, when we were separated from one another. Praise God. God used him to keep the church together. Praise God by having online services. Praise God. And we thank God for the vision that God has given him. Praise God. And let us continue to pray much for him. Praise God. And also pray also for the family and the church family at large in Jesus' name. Praise God. This time, praise God, we're going to have some words of affirmation. Praise God. We're going to hear first of all from Bishop Raymond Williams. Praise God, MBE from Bethel Apostolic Ark in Jesus' name. Look what Jesus did since he watched me. Since he watched me. Since he watched me. I said, Look what Jesus did since he watched me. I said, He watched me in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I'm saved. And I know that I am. I'm saved. And I know that I am not washed in the blood of the Lamb. I said, Look what Jesus did since he watched me. Oh, look what Jesus did. Oh, I'm saved. And I know that I am. I'm saved. And I know that I am. I'm saved. I'm 
from um, Elder Mark Downey. Praise God. Praise God. Pastor Saints, the light of the Apostle Church, Columbus, Ohio, USA. Praise the Lord, Saints. Truly I do honor the name of the Lord Jesus today. I give thanks to him for he is worthy of all praises and honor. I'm so grateful to be in the house of the Lord today. It is um, a special privilege to see my brother today. I'm already full at the moment, so you're going to have to give me a chance because I'm going to have to try to get through this. But he's the one who taught me how to kick a ball so that it would curve and go right into the goal. He's the one who taught me that if I play tennis and I slice it like this, I can get movement on the ball. But more importantly than that, he's the one who taught me how to pray. At church, back when we would do church, it was an all day event. Starting with prayer in the morning, you remember? We wouldn't get back until 11 p.m. At least, it was the one night of the week 
where I could stay up as long as I chose. It was the one night of the week where I didn't care. And we would, I was, remember there was one night I was getting ready to go to my bed. I says, oh, it's time, 11 p.m., I've got to school in the morning, let me go to my bed. I was about five years old at the time. And my brother says to me, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to my bed. School in the morning, he says, have you prayed yet? Remember, I'm five, which means he's probably about 14 years old. And his concern for me is my prayer life. You know what I've done every single night since? Pray. I remember, I remember going to a trip, a school trip in London, in, in Wales somewhere. We were going on one of the first school trips. And I get ready to do my prayer. No one else is praying. But I'm getting ready to do my, my prayers. You know why? Because my brother told me so. And today, I'm standing here because of your example. Today, I'm standing because you stood. Today I'm standing because you decided that this was way more important. And remember, he's the best looking, the fastest, the strongest. He is my big brother. He's the fastest, strongest person I know. And he's telling me to pray. What do you think I'm going to do? Pray. You think you could convince me to do anything else? I'm going to pray. So I give thanks for you. This is a moment based in legacy. I know we talked about legacy as gifts. But legacy is more than that. Legacy is the reason why we are all here in this way today. Legacy isn't just about what you've been given. Legacy is how you've decided to walk based on the past. And I'm giving God thanks for you. When, when you were married to Sister Ange, I remember my dad, Apostle, smiled so hard that I, it was like his cheeks were going to explode. And I remember, because I was thinking all the time, and I realize now in retrospect, he was thinking about this moment. And the safety and care of the church. He knew it was going to be in good hands. He knew it was. And so I give God thanks for the both of you, for the life you now have, for the example you're giving me every day. I, I look up to you, and I'm grateful to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the light of love shine upon you always. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Lord bless you, Elder Downey. Uh, wonderful, sweet words. Praise God. It's so nice. Praise God. To see, legacy has been continued in the family. Praise God. And we do give God thanks in Jesus' name. This time, um, we're going to hear a few words from our beloved mother. Uh, Mother Nelson, God Almighty, I'm saying Mother Dolly. Lord. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Praise the name of Jesus. Mother Nelson, see the Mother, the John the Son, in Jesus' name. Praise God, all the ministers and elders, and a special greeting to my beloved Bishop Floyd Sylvester Dam. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God, tonight I just magnify the name of the Lord. You know, I sat there and I said, Oh, I don't think I can come out here anymore. Praise God, my nerves just take hold of me now because I keep looking back. I'm at a downy. And that's why I felt like that tonight, knowing that she would be so happy and glad if she was here tonight, to see the part that her son has taken. But as we say, God know best. The Lord give it and the Lord take it away. And I give God thanks that he spared my life, that I can be here standing tonight to give God thanks and give God glory. Jesus, praise God, give me thanks for our, our beloved bishop, praise God. I knew 
bishop when he was a little child. Growing up, going to school. Praise God. And from school or wherever I go, I watch him all the way grow up. He grew up in the church. Praise God as a young man. Always playing, whether it's guitar, whatever it is, bass. I don't know the difference. But he was always playing something. He was always playing something. Praise God. But he was always there in the house of the Lord. And I thank God tonight for you, Bishop. Since so the time come, praise God, you was a minister. Then you became an elder. And tonight, you got your proper title. Praise God, you was a bishop, but now the fulfillment of it after a pastor. Now tonight, you became the bishop of General Assembly. And I just want to encourage you tonight, stay with the Lord. Praise God. Look out. You're going to be some, um, some Balat and Toba will be coming after you. Yes. Praise God. But I'm encouraging you to be Nehemiah tonight. And so I'm on a high work. Yes. And I won't come down. And you stay up on that high work. And continue to preach the word in season and out of season. Yes. We know that we can rely on you. Praise God. And you stand fast. Be a true soldier and die at your post. Now, Pastor Le um, Bishop, I'm going back to a pastor. But let no one take this joy from you that the Lord has given unto you. And I'm so glad to be here. Last year, you know, mentioned about what was going to happen. I said, Bishop, why don't you do it? The, the year that was in 2022. But the time wasn't right. We just come out of lockdown. But what I was thinking about, he didn't see my vision. What I was thinking about, I'm high going to see this year. Will I be here? Praise God, that's, that's the way I was looking. And I said, Mother Downey not here, Pastor is not here, I would like to be here. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Because he kept me that I can be here tonight. You be true, Bishop. We are here behind you 110%. Praise God. I just want to keep on encouraging you. Stay with you. Praise God. You know when the enemy try to push you down? The brethren are there to lift up your hands. Many will not like it. But I give God thanks to Jesus and I will be there with you all the way. Be true to my sense of God. Pray for me. Praise God. Because if I start here tonight, we'll be here till 10, 12 o'clock. Just talking about Bishop Downey. But I'm just leaving you in the hands of the Lord Jesus. And you pray for me. Because as I said tonight, I'm a bit overflow looking back where we're coming from. Praise God. And to see that your mother is not here. I'm not talking about a pastor tonight. Praise God. Because um, when you were a die, Isaiah saw the Lord. So a pastor have to come out the way for the Lord to lift you up. Praise God. So I give God thanks for you. But I just thank God for your parents, the way that they grow you, and the way that you are in the house of the Lord. Brethren, now pray for him. Don't try to pull him down. Pray for him and lift him up that he can stand as our bishop. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. This time we're going to lift our offering. We give God thanks to Mother Nelson. Thank you. In Jesus' name. We're going to lift our offering as churches. Please stand. And I'll ask um, Evangelist Garner from Mount Carmel to bless the offering. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Father, again, Lord, as you ask, grant us this wonderful privilege today. Even as all has said and done, and as we come to this part, Lord, we pray that you will bless each and every one that stretched for their hand to give an offering. And those who does not have, we pray, Lord, that you will bless them likewise. And maybe someday they may have to give unto thee. And not only an offering, Lord, but our heart unto thee in spirit and in truth. I ask and give thanks 
In Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Just to make you aware, if you have a smartphone, praise God, you can also pay an offering by using the QR code uh, inside your brochure. Uh, inside the brochure, praise God. I think it's the last page. Praise God in Jesus' name. Okay? So those who are technology conscious, praise the name of the Lord. You can QR in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Tell me who can stand before us. When we call on his great name, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Tell me who can tell me for us when we call on his great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we are the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to be. Can stand before us where we call on his great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we are the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we are the victory. In the name of Yeah. 
you to use friends now. Hallelujah. Now give God thanks for the goodness and mercy. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. This time a few words from Brother Brandon Downey from Mount Carmel in Jesus' name. We praise the saints. We praise the saints. We praise the saints. Thank you for has done. Greetings to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Greetings to our presiding bishop. Greetings to the men of God and greetings to the brethren in Jesus' name. This is such a proud and special moment. Um, I thank God for bringing my father this far. Um, I've known him since he was a little bit. But now I've seen his growth. It's amazing. Um, bishop Dawes spoke earlier about the blueprint. And it truly touched me because I see what had to happen first within the foundation. It's not normal for any form of man to go through the things Bishop's gone through and still be standing. There's been situations of just being a black father figure he's not seen today. Amen. And he stood there tall after every hurdle, after having seven kids, after having mom get sick, you stood tall. You're a walking example to everyone. Everyone should sit down and take notes that this is a man of God. You walk with authority. You walk with purpose. And I just thank God for this, this living example having in my life. And I'm able, to, I'm able to brag about this to everybody and anybody. I, I, I introduce my dad to friends all the time. Yeah, yeah, this, this, this is my dad. This, this, this. Um, there's even situations of where he took me to the basketball park and I was, I was probably about eight, nine and we'd, we'd bring other friends as well and we'd even meet people there that we didn't know and we'd play basketball and they'd ask him, well, so what's your name? He's like, Bishop. <laughs> what should no, Bishop. So we'd be playing, like, oh, Bishop, 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 yeah, 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 Bishop, Bishop, nice shot, nice shot. And it was just a, a great way to to promote the word of God, how he carried himself constantly in season, out of season. And it's not most, most pastors, when, when they leave church, you can tell like, oh yeah, this person is obviously a hierarchy, he carries himself, his, his chin is up. But with, 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 with Bishop, he's just so common. Just like you saw with Jesus Christ, how among the people, you couldn't tell which one he was hearing. But he blends in so much because he'll carry himself as, as higher than all of us. He's our greatest servant. And I thank God for what he has done, blessing us with him. I've seen him how he's guided the churches through lockdown. Yeah. Most churches haven't been the same since lockdown. Right. But he's able to take us through every single moment, from Zoom to when Zoom was finished, we were back in church, to forcing us to Bible class in church. And why be in church? Exactly. Exactly. Because you don't change for nobody. One thing it was hard realizing, right? And I, I think I realized it probably in my late teens, and it was very annoying, but it is what it is. He loves me. He loves all of us. He loves me, he loves my sisters, he loves my mom, he loves his family, he loves the brethren, all equally. And he will do what he can for everybody. Yes, he loves you too. But I'll tell you one thing. You can't come between him and his Jesus. It doesn't matter who you are. He will forsake you in a heart. He will leave you alone. Because he's like, no, this is, this is more important. I have a purpose here, and this is way more important. And it's hard, it's hard to acknowledge that so you can see something unknowing and have faith that strong that no one else can come in that way. But you stay strong constantly. And as you go on, sir, I want you to, want to realise that this, this position is no, is no joke. It is a serious matter. I've seen the burden on your shoulders throughout life, and the Lord has crafted you. He's kept you on the potter's wheel. You're one of the few pastors I know that will get up on the pulpit and repent publicly. Put his mistakes out of there to see, brethren, I'm not perfect, but I'm still working on me. Jesus Christ is still working on me, constantly. So if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen you preach the gospel and people get filled in the congregation. I've seen you heal the sick. I've seen you bury thousands, thousands, that was exaggeration, apologies. But I've seen you bury many people and been very straight talking about it. 
But as you go on, there is going to become a time, because end times are coming, and there's going to be riots in groups, in communities that are going to hate you. Come on now. They are going to hate you. And they're going to come for your job, they're going to come for your family, they're going to come for your life. But you need to stand firm. Yes. Hold your head up high. Yes. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. Not trust the flesh. Trust Jesus Christ. He has carried you this far and he'll continue to carry you. I thank God so much for, for what I had experienced with this man. And it, I truly have to soak it in. Soak it in. Because there will become a time when he's not here, whether we all go up to glory or he's just not here. And we have to cherish this. You don't see this common. The man that we have in front of us is not a, it's not a common person to have. But as you go on, sir, stand strong. And I'd like to ask the church to continue to pray for him. And to support him, not in words, but in actions and in spirit. I spoke about people hating you. But it was the Jews that hated Jesus Christ. It was his own people who he was king of that hated him. So be careful of people who are around you. Make sure that they are genuine. Don't have ulterior motives. Because you are what God needs you to be. So keep walking the fight. Keep battling on. Rebuke demons as you go on. And I thank the Lord for what he has done. Please pray for me in Jesus' name. God bless you, sir. In Jesus' name, praise God. This time, praise God, we're going to have a few words from our beloved Bishop Hamilton, Land Sample for Greater Faith Ministries. Cool, JC, in Jesus' name. So let the storms rage out, the dark clouds rise. They don't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and no one can harm me. For celebrate with my brother and my friend, amen, and also to his dear family. I love them very much indeed. 
uh, three of his children, uh, the, they, they're my goddaughters. Amen. And I'm very, very proud of them. Amen. Thank God for you, Bishop Floyd. When you were younger, my children used to call you Fluid. <laughs> and uh, he was one of the inspirations that got Michael playing the bass guitar and so on. And we thank God for you. Well, I'm here today to celebrate with you and to thank God for your life. It is a life that I've been part of for most of your life. I believe we have been friends now for over 40 years. Amen, and I thank God for you very dearly. The Downies, the Nelsons, amen, and other members of this uh, august body, Sister Flag, as she is now, amen. Uh, Mark and Keith and John, as I call them, Amen. elders, of course, I give honor to whom it is due and to beloved Mother Nelson, who just spoke so eloquently. Amen. I give God thanks. Looking back over the years, I remember times when I came up this side, stayed in your houses. Amen. And much labor has gone into, amen, what we have seen today. I want to encourage you that the Lord will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Hallelujah. When you become a leader, many times people stand up and say, I love my bishop. I love him. I love him to life. And you'll hear words like that. But as soon as you have to tell them off about something, they vote with their feet, they walk away and leave. But I want to tell you, Jesus will never, never leave you or forsake you. Amen. For this day you were born, I look at 1 Samuel chapter 16, when David was anointed. Hallelujah. Samuel poured the oil on his head. And don't forget it was a process that he went through. Amen. There were others who looked like it. They had good walk, good talk. Handsome and big and everything else. I'm not saying you're not handsome because you are. But praise God, it was David that was chosen. And the Bible says simply that from the day David was anointed with oil, the Spirit of the Lord stayed with him. So I'm saying to you that God is with you. He will never leave you. Never forsake you. Hallelujah. Never leave or forsake you. So keep on keeping on. I also say to you that you have a beautiful family. And part of being a bishop is also looking after your family continually. And I'm proud of you, uh, Bishop Floyd. Really proud of you. He's got seven children and he has broken the statistical analysis of black fathers. Amen? He has been faithful to his wife, loving to his children, amen, and his extended family, Floyd, Bishop Floyd, has just been a blessing. I think we ought to give him an extra round of applause. family and I'm very proud of every one of you 
I exhort you and I exhort your wife. As you already know, you couldn't be where you are without your darling wife. Continue to cherish and look after her. Amen. I heard your son speak so nicely, lovingly, about what she's been through. And you've both been through it together. I am so very proud of you. My heart goes out to you. Amen. And I just want to say to you, vision is what makes a great leader. In the years ahead, you will have to be an architect because you have buildings to maintain. Amen. You will have to be a surveyor. Not necessarily to do it for yourself, but you will have to have the vision where it's necessary and put things into place. You will be a champion of the community, which you already are. You will need to be politically astute because, praise God, black churches or black majority churches, I should say, hallelujah, we are required to be more active in our communities round about us. Let the Lord guide you and lead you. Amen. Church, doing church is not about only what happens within these four walls. Hallelujah. Most people go to church and they're in church for two hours on a Sunday and you don't see them again until, if you're lucky, until the following Sunday. But praise God, in the heart of the community are the people that you are required to reach. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus went out into the streets and he helped the blind man. He healed the lame. He, he touched those who, who were leprous. Amen. And brought them back to healing again. I encourage you. Let the Lord guide you. Amen. Let the Lord lead you. Be strong and of good courage. And I promise you this. By the grace of God assisting me, I will not be one of the ones that will run away and depart and you never see again. Amen? When you need me, I'll be right here for you. Amen. I've got nowhere going. Jesus is everything to me anyway. So, thanking God for you, be strong and know that he will never, ever, ever leave you or forsake you. Ange, that's Mother Angel Angela. Amen? Don't worry. Keep looking after him. Amen. Look after each other. Bishops can still be romantic. <laughs> Bishop can still take his wife on a holiday. Bishops can still take his family on a holiday. Presiding bishops, hallelujah, still look after their girls, still walk with their sons and play basketball. Amen. God bless you. Love you lots. Amen. Keep well in the name of Jesus. Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Bishop. Such wonderful words. In Jesus' name. At this time, we're going to hear from Bishop C.T. Richards from Church of Jesus Christ, UK. In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord, everyone. Praise Let us lift up our hands and praise. Bless the Lord. I try not to be long. <laughs> Amen. I've got so much to say, but I try not to be long. Uh, first of all, I must uh, give honor to the Spirit of God and to our presiding bishop and his wife and family and to all the saints here in this assembly and to the visitors' greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I just give God thanks for this opportunity just to be here and I can tell you I would never miss this. <laughs> Amen. 
I remember the times when I, I was here, even in convocation, and I remember times that uh, your father, uh, Apostle Dowie, leave me here in convocation and said, carry on, and went to Manchester. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Amen. I give God thanks for you, and I'm sure that the Lord will continue to be with you. He will guide you, and he will protect you. I just want to leave a, a word with you. Uh, David, at one time in his life, he got to a place, and if you remember that he had a place called Ziglag. He, he, some king gave him, amen, a little place, and there he was with his family and his wives. And he had to go and fight. Amen. And he took 300 men and he fought and when he came back the enemy came and took his wife and his family. And the word of God said that the 300 men turned against him. But the word said, David encouraged himself. And so you have to get to the place at times when everything seems failing. But remember to encourage yourself. God has brought you this far and he has led you. Amen. In your ministry. And I know that you have done great work because I, I know when you have started somewhere and everything that was going on. And I know how oh God has kept you until this day. And the same God that keeps you when you were somewhere else doing something else. The same God. You get to a place now where you are elevated into an office where the enemy hates you more. And I can tell you this, that's where your fighting starts. But God promised that he will be with you and be not discouraged regardless of that which will be happening. Because he promised. And he said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I come unto you. So in your discouragement, encourage yourself. God bless you. Praise God. God bless the bishop. Praise God. Give God thanks to him. Love him, man of God. Praise God in Jesus. And this time, just going to sidetrack slightly. Um, we have Elder Linton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I greet you all in the mighty and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Special greetings to our host, Bishop Downey, his dear wife, his children, to the church family on the whole. Greetings in Jesus' name. But we also greet all the the bishops, Bishop Hamilton, Bishop Williams, Bishop Richards, Bishop Dawes, all the pastors, ministers, saints from everywhere, greetings in Jesus' name. I'm never good at doing that, but all my brothers and sisters in Christ, greetings in Jesus' name. I'm so glad to be here this afternoon, this evening. I've come from Manchester with one of our church sisters, evangelist, um, Annika and her two daughters, um, Kaylee and Naomi. Because we are so stretched with so many things happening in different places. But let me just say again, Bishop Keith Linton very much regrets that he could not be here this evening to celebrate this day with you. He accepted an appointment way back in January and he's at this present time in Birmingham carrying out that assignment. My brother, I'm very much in the same net as you, having an older brother who is setting the standards. We go back a long way. 
you're, you know, it's, it is said often that we are coming from way down yonder. Your dad, your mom, and all the saints. In the booklet we see the pictures of the little children, all the faces that we once knew. And tonight my heart was glad to be here. Bishop Downey, when I saw you standing there with the shepherd's staff, I remember I was at your meeting in, back in February, I think. And you were waiting for some of the brethren to arrive from somewhere. And they were delayed. And I could see that you were concerned. And what impressed me was what you did next. You got up from the service, from the meeting. And you went out onto the motorway to seek those that were broken down. Yeah. Yeah. It's not what people say impresses me. It's what they do. And that night I saw the heart of a shepherd. I saw a man who was concerned about his people. Yeah? You would not sit and send somebody else. You're not a, just a delegator. But you were willing to go yourself. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus went many places himself after sending his disciples away. Knowing that they would not have the heart and the mindset to deal with whatever problems. So tonight, my brother, I'm older than you, but I remember when you were a little boy, I remember where you're all coming from. We're all coming up together. Let no man despise your youth, as Paul told Timothy. Yeah? But as a bishop, you hold the mystery of things. And therefore, you're a standard bearer. It's not about flattery. It's not what about men will say. Be a God pleaser. Because men will say all kinds to butter you up this minute. And they, they will turn against you. But as it has been said tonight, Jesus will never let you down. God bless you tonight. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, sir. In Jesus' name. And this time, praise God, we're going to hear a few words from Bishop Elder Nelson, Executive Secretary, General Assembly of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We give God thanks for this day. Praise the Lord Jesus. Honor and praise we give to the Almighty God. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I extend greetings, praise God, to our bishops, to my bishop. Praise God to the elders, all the ministers, and each and every one that comes along, whether, praise God, in the downstairs whether you're on the balcony whether you're tuning in on zoom i greet you in the wonderful name of our lord jesus christ because there's none other name given on the heaven whereby we must be saved praise the lord jesus glory be to god i stood here tonight and i looked and i observed and not only tonight, but over recent months and recent years. And I said to myself, if Apostle could talk today, he would approve of what he sees and what is taking place. Not only tonight, but also the way that the organization continues to operate. I said to myself, if Bishop Malcolm was alive, I believe he also would approve and certify and praise God, be pleased with what is taking place. And that's a good thing. But I came to the conclusion that it all means nothing unless the almighty God, the creator of all things, the alpha and omega, the beginning and the ending, praise the Lord Jesus, if he does not praise God, uh, 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 prove or praise God if his presence, if he's not 
in his will what we are doing, then we're just wasting time. If God is not in it, then it don't serve no purpose. So I pray for you, my brother. And I tell you this one thing. You put God first. Put God first. And everything will be alright. Some will love you, some will hate you. But put God first anyhow. Some will reject you, some will accept you. Put God first anyhow. And let me say to everybody else publicly, I stand by him 100%. Praise God. If you want a fight with me, fight him. Did you get it? I said, if you want a fight with me, fight him. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because I said, I stand with you 100%. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And so, sir, all of us. You may think I'm joking. Praise the Lord. But the late apostle one day he called me one side and he said, When I'm gone, work with Bishop. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. And I mean to do that, sir. And by the grace of God, assist me. Praise God. At this time, praise God, I have a few words from our beloved Pastor McGann, uh, East Medivale Apostolic Church, Medivale East, in Canada. <laughs> we are coming from the furthest and we're traveling the longest so we should have the longest and the most to say <laughs> we uh, were traveling from four o'clock yesterday and we came at about four o'clock this afternoon and I ignoring the time difference. So we're almost 24 hours traveling just to be here, Elder Steele and Sister Jen to be here from Medivale East Apostolic Church. And we thank God for the privilege you've given us to be a part of this fellowship of General Assembly of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, where should we start? It's a long story and it doesn't have a short ending because what we witness here tonight is the, the confirmation and the consummation of what Apostle had in mind when he met me about 14, 15 years ago in Far Rockaway when he says, Pastor McGann, I want you to work and stay fellowship with my son when I'm gone. I want you to stay close by him. I didn't know that this day would come to pass and he would not be here to celebrate. But when I hear all the testimonies and the words of encouragement, particularly from your brother Mark, it just resonates with me that what has been done is fulfill the word of the Lord. And so on behalf of the saints of Medivale East Church, uh, Elder Steele, uh, and all the saints, we are glad to be here. I look at your beautiful faces and the smiles and the words of encouragement and endorsements, and I say in myself, all these people cannot be lying. They must have some, uh, some element of truth in what they say to the bishop. Uh, the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ and all the bishops. We bless you in the name of the Lord and I thank you, uh, Bishop Downey, for allowing us a privilege of be part of this family of God. Um, 
as we gather here tonight, this event is like no other event we have experienced. But this marks the culmination of a long and arduous journey that the Lord has brought through Bishop and his wonderful wife, Sister Anne. You could not have a better person to be your wife than Sister Anne. When I look at the mementos and the pictures here, it's a testament that God placed her in your life to be what God wants you to be. Um, I like to quote, quote from uh, one of William Shakespeare's plays that some may be aware of. But may not have given thought to some of these words. I graduated from high school over 50 years ago. 50 odd years ago, almost 60, yeah, 55 years ago. This year I celebrated my 70th year, but I still remember snippets of some of the things that I studied. He says, uh, I'm, I'm quoting from uh, his writings in uh, King Henry V. And in the opening scene of King Henry V, the Archbishop of Canterbury describing the new king, that is King Henry V, seemingly miraculous conversion from a prayful prince to a full, one of full grace and fair return. And he exclaims, he exclaims, never came such reformation in a flood when he saw how King Henry V how is changed so dramatically to become the king in such a short time and when the kingdom was trust on him he behaved as if he was in, in a mode that was responsive and remarkable uh, and so we remark, never came such reformation in the flood. Well, tonight I can say this was not a reformation. There was a long and arduous journey that God has brought Bishop gradual development that God did in molding and aligning this young man to be this kind, gracious, committed, and firm man in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he could be anointed to become the presiding bishop of General Assembly of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the over 14 years I've known him, he has gone from strength to strength, from heights to heights to high heights, and he has gelled in a fine and wonderful preacher. He's preached many times at Meadowvale East Church and he has been such a blessing that he's well loved and beloved. That's why we came so far because of his love and care for us. We're still waiting to see Sister Anne and the kids. Amen? I'm just a shout out to you girls because you're not only friends but you're almost part of our family. You are just not an ordinary man. But Paul writes into the, into the, uh, the Galatians, he said, But I certify you that the gospel which was preached was not after man, but after God. For neither did you receive it from man, but God anointed you to be a vessel of honor for his purpose. Bishop Floyd you have shown to us that you sincerely believe the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Like your dad, Apostle Downey, your work of planting, sowing, mulching has not been vain. We see many sons of the gospel of Jesus Christ who have become renegades concerning the apostolic faith. But we see here tonight a man of God who have inculcated this message and lives a life that commensurate with the message. I join with your theme 
in 2 Timothy 4, 1 to 9. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who should judge the quick and the dead, that he should preach the word, be instant, in season, rebuke, reprove with all long suffering doctrine. Amen. That that amen with all long suffering doctrine. For the time will come, and I see today. The time has come where men will not endure sound doctrine. Praise the Lord. But you have a responsibility, as your son said, as your brother says, to continue the work of preaching the word of God. Bishop, this is the penultimate office that you have been called to, as being the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your mantra. This is your calling. This is the ultimate of all the endeavors. I keep preaching the word of the Lord that your labor will not be in vain. God bless you on behalf of all the saints from Medivale Church. We're so glad to be with you tonight and to join in your elevation to the office of presiding bishop of Me of Me of Noah, General Assembly of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Love and love. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Give God thanks for your sir in Jesus' name. Praise God. Before I hand to our bishop, praise God. I believe Mother Nelson has something further to say. Praise God in Jesus' name. I think she forgot something to say. So we receive her in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to tell you. Bishop um, Downey is not just only my bishop. He's my one and only son-in-law. Oh. <laughs> and let the church say, yeah. Amen. <laughs> praise the name of the Lord. God bless you, Jesus' name. At this time, praise God, the church will stand and we receive our presiding bishop, Bishop Floyd Sylvester Downey. Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living. Each moment because of you, and I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy. I'm 
sanctuary. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Praise God. I must give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him I owe everything. He is the first, the last, and he is the middle. He's the front. He's the back. He's the top. And he's the bottom. God is everything. Praise the Lord. I stand here overwhelmed with joy. Praise God. And have to say thank you to everyone that is here today to share in this uh, notable occasion. Praise God. Uh, I just give God thanks. I just want to say thank you to the College of Bishops. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, to my Bishop Dawson and Bishop Hamilton, it's just for us, it's not Bishop. Praise God, and uh, we just, it's Floyd, it's there. Yeah. It's always been that. Yeah. So when he came up here, it was very difficult. <laughs> For him to remember the formalities. Praise God. It's no disrespect. It's a, shine of show, a show of love and affection. Praise God. Um, I just want to thank all the saints, the presbytery, the pastors, the elders, the ministers. Thank you all for joining with me in this occasion. Uh, I thank you for joining, being here with us. To Pastor McGann, I, I just want to thank you for your continuous support. Praise the Lord. Many make promises. I hear the words of the bishops and everyone who's been telling me. Praise God, I know, I know, I know. There are many good words being said, but there's no substance to it. Praise the Lord, they're very pretty in their deliverance. But when it comes to the testing of it, they fall short, for the words are hollow. Praise God, but I thank the Lord that Pastor McGann especially, I want to say thank you for your continuation and support. Not only when Apostle was here, but after he had passed. Praise God. And as you was with him, so you have been with me. You have not let time and distance change that. And I love to observe. And I love to watch. Praise God to my brother. Praise God, you know, your words meant much. His funny thing is that what he said, he only know half the story. <laughs> when he was about to get baptized, and as growing up in the church, we sometimes sugarcoat things. And I was going through a period of time where I wasn't sure. Because I didn't get filled till I was 18, baptized at nine. I didn't get filled till I was 18. So there was a period of time of instability. And when my brother said to me that he wanted to be baptized, there was something in me 
saying, tell him not to. Wait till you're a little older and then make the decision. But I'm glad I didn't listen to that voice. Yeah. You see, sometimes we determine because of what we are going through that it can't be good for somebody else. And my experience is not his experience. But one thing I wanted him to have is you experience God for yourself. If you don't want to love him, you've come to that decision. If you don't want to serve him, that's your choice. But I didn't want to influence that choice. Many of you are guilty that when your children come, you say they're too young. And then when they come of age, they change their mind. When you should have let them experience God for themselves. Let them say God failed me. Let them say God didn't come to where I needed him. But you make that decision. But when they say I want to do football, you encourage them. When they want to do everything outside of Christ, you're all for them. But as soon as they mention Jesus Christ, you draw the brakes. My brother, you're a shining light to me. You think because of age, it makes a difference. Lights come from all places. Lights are old and lights are young. But you have to recognize light and see the goodness in everyone and be able to recognize that is a good man and woman of the Lord. Praise God. I just want to say thank you to Elder Mackenzie. Praise God. Elder Adlin. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you for being here. Praise the Lord. Again, forgive me, my, my, my memory's gone now. <laughs> you know, I'm not nervous. Praise the Lord. My dear you know, brother, Mark Day. Praise God. Thank you. The last time we were together was in, in Far Rockaway. Praise God. We were listening to the tape a few times ago. Praise God. And you're still standing in the promises of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I just want to thank my uncle. Praise God. Uncle Ulysses. Yes, sir. For being here today. Praise the Lord. Uh, truly, it's been tough. Praise God. <clears throat> we'll move on a little bit. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, I can't go there. Praise the Lord, but you know we love you, sir, and thank you for being here. Brian, praise God, thank you for being here. Praise the Lord. To my family and friends that are here, praise God. I see my Kerr family sitting in the corner. Praise, praise the Lord. God bless you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Again, inspirations to me. And being strong is Elder John. If there is one that's solid, firm, steadfast, unmovable, it's that man there. Don't take his meekness for weakness. Don't take it. You, you're making a sad mistake. He may be quiet, but he is strong in the Lord. He is rooted and grounded in the faith. When I was when we were in uh, Warsaw. He was beside me every step of the way. It was our growing ground. Praise the Lord. 
apostle is just something, something different. His way of seeing forward and planning and putting in motion was beyond the years and beyond our understanding. But I'll touch on that a little further. And I just want to say thank you, sir. Uh, when we were in Warsaw, as I was saying, we, we grew together. And I understand that for you to grow, you've got to be in uncomfortable situations. Right. Because you can't grow in comfort. Comfort is not where you grow. Comfort is where you die. There's a thing that you hear people speak about and everyone goes to, it's called growing pains. Yes. I remember as a young man, my joints would hurt and ache as I started to mature physically. Then it was painful. Muscle contractions, joint pain. Because we were physically growing. It wasn't easy and as we were in the ministry in Warsaw, we both began to feed off each other and grow, and grow, and grow. And that was the start of how the Lord began to develop me. Because sometimes staying at home, you become lazy. Mom's always doing it. Dad's always doing it. The, the, the elder folk are always looking after the young ones. But when we're sent out on the mission field, it was then we, we were allowed to cut our teeth. Praise God. I want to say thank you for all those that are online that have joined with us today. Praise God. Praise God. I know that you, if you could have been here, you would have. Some are just wanting to see what's going on in General Assembly. <laughs> Praise God. But come and taste and see that the Lord is good. To the organizers of this installation service, to the team that worked tirelessly in putting everything together, the sleepless nights, the toing and froing, the brochure that they've produced, praise God. I, I, I'm grateful because when I die, I won't see my other one. <laughs> I won't see the other one. But I'll see this one here today. And I can see the love and the heart that has gone into it. And I want to thank everyone for your labor. Love you. Look at my, look at my beautiful family. Wow. When they ask me, how many children say I've got seven and they ask me with one woman? <laughs> yes! Yes, one woman! If somebody wants to steal her, they're not going to steal her. No, she's mine. I made sure of that. Sure. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. To my brothers and sisters, to my sister, and my sister, and my sister. Praise the Lord, I love you. Praise God. One sister can't be here tonight. So remember Janice in your prayers. We thank the Lord that she is not here physically in the building, but she's here with us on the land of the living. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. To my, the man that made my role. <laughs> Teacher Dave, he was supposed to be here tonight. He's the one that does the class here on a Wednesday that sows this was his offering. But he made this. He 
he again one that worked with apostle when he was here and as he was with apostle so he has been with me praise God to my surviving mother mother Augustine Nelson I was blessed with two mothers and I've got one left so I want to make sure that uh, she did say to me, you're going to make me dead and don't see the install you. <laughs> she was very blunt with it. Praise God. So we had to make sure because it, it reached a point in time where because of since the, that passed away and then the COVID and then coming out. The time had lapsed and it was like, do I, you know, everyone already sees me as that, so do I just carry on? But she stirred something up in me, praise God, so I made sure that she's not going to say to me, you mean to say you met me come so far, and it didn't happen. So I thank you, Mom. I just also want to say thank you to my dearly beloved wife. Yes, Praise God. Yes, Hallelujah. Minister Flack says his wife is the most beautiful woman in here. Well, uh, no. well, I'm going to challenge you on that one. I thank you for being the woman that you are. You're more than a wife. You're my friend, my best friend. What's wrong with you, church? She's my best friend, my best friend, my best friend. Praise the Lord. But when it comes to church, she's not my best friend. Jesus is my best friend. Hallelujah. But I thank you. She's the Aki of my saltfish. She's the peas of my rice. Huh? Hmm? She's my butter bean to my axe tail. You don't have to worry about me, Bishop. It's all in the game. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I thank God for you. Praise the Lord. I know that when we got together to be married, that was, as Mark was saying, that was, if that could have chosen for me, if I'd have let him choose, he would have chosen her to be my wife. But you know, in this day and age, we don't want our parents to choose. <laughs> Huh? Okay, I, 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 I'm only speaking because you know it's true. Yes. Hallelujah. But when, when I told dad of how I felt, he was so happy. And our 20... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 20, coming 27 years, I think, this year. That's right, 27. Hallelujah. Get out of that one. It has been a joy. It has been a joy. It has been a joy. It's been a joy. Even when things were hard and difficult, when I look back, it just pales into insignificance. And we just love. We still laugh and hoop and cry with laughter. Just in our presence, we'll sit down and be talking. 
and we just laugh. Huh? Praise God. Hallelujah. Leave yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. But now on to general assembly of our Lord Jesus Christ. I would just like to take a moment in remembrance of Bishop Neville Malcolm and Apostle Jelf Downey. The forerunners. Just take a moment, silence. In 1982, Bishop Malcolm began the General Assembly of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was at a place, church in London, called Hope Chapel. Praise God. Who would have known back then when I was hiding from tarry in service, <laughs> pretending I had stomachache, that I'd be standing here today? Who would have known that that journey of a staggered beginning would come to this point today? Some of you think when we reach here, it's because it was easy. That when we reach here, it was because it was a walk in the park. But many don't realize the ups and the downs, the discouragements, the being left behind because everyone else seems to be having fun, feeling alone because when you thought you should be one place, you are not there. But God is good. And three years later, in 1985, Bishop Malcolm passed away. And then, in 2018, the Apostle picked up the mantle and continued with General Assembly for 24 years until the Lord called him home. That was truly a hard thing. Because I wasn't prepared or I wasn't ready. And as I stand here, I say to you, I would give all this back to have him back here. That man was truly a man of God. I was blessed to have him as a father. Bishop Malcolm was a man of prayer, a man of dedication. He loved, he, he was the first man I knew have a room called the prayer room. And when he entered into that prayer room, he didn't come out until he had finished with talking to the Lord. It could have been an hour, it could have been days. But once he locked that door behind him, nobody could get to Bishop Malcolm. And my father was influenced by this man, not just naturally, but spiritually. And when the apostle took over, he had some of the same traits. A man of dignity, a man of discipline, a man of vision. One that spent time and taught us as ministers. 
think I was talking to Bishop Richards, bless you sir. And I was saying that many before that came to the UK and became pastors and leaders, they had no one to train them. They worked as according to the best of their understanding. Many faulted them because of what they did, not realizing they had no template of someone showing them and telling them what to do. But when Apostle had seen this, he took time out with all us ministers on an individual basis and collective basis he taught us praise God some of his teachings were very difficult some of his teaching was that you're going to do the funeral service today and you had to get up and come and lead the service praise God and sometimes you would sit there and you were struggling and sweating. And we would go back and we would say, why does he have to throw us in like that? Why can't he do this and do that? Not realizing that he had gone through the motion where there was no one in his corner. He had to go through it all by himself. I thank the Lord for him. You would have seen the staff that was brought in. The staff was the staff that he had when we bought this building. And he was a proud man because it was one of his visions that he had. That the people of God must have a place to worship. When the Lord had blessed him with this house that we are in today. He marched with the staff around the area and back into the church with the staff in his hand. The Bible that you saw me holding was the Bible that Bishop Malcolm had given to Apostle Downey. And the same Bible now is in my possession. What am I saying to you as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Those of you who know Apostle, new apostle, you knew that he stood staunch for this. Didn't believe in marriage and divorce. Didn't believe in woman preachers. Didn't believe in women pastors. Didn't believe in living an unclean life. Believed in holiness. Believed in living a sanctified life. He pressed towards that. Many didn't like him because of his stance. Many didn't like him because of what he believed. Well, guess what? The chip hasn't moved from the block. What he stood for is what I stand for today. Some may have been thinking, well, Pastor's not here. That Floyd fella is all right. He's pretty laid back. If I didn't believe it, I would not have stood with him. I'm a grown man. I can make my decisions. But what he stood for, I believed it 100%. When you fought him, you fought me. And I took it personally. So I hear you, Elder. I hear you, Elders. Brethren, I don't have a special vision. I don't even have a mantra. All I am going to do is what Joshua did. He did what, his, what Moses was doing. All he did was continue that which Moses had been given to do. 
So I'm not going to give you my long list of what I'm going to achieve. All I'm going to do is what Apostle and Bishop Malcolm started and run it till my days are complete. If you're with me, we will run. If you're against me, I'm going to run by myself until the Lord takes me home. For if God be for us, if God be for us, except God build a house, except God build a house, they that labor, labor in vain. So today, brethren, thank you for being here with us this evening. I'm not going any further. I thank you. All I ask is pray for me. All I ask. I'm like this. If you don't come here, it makes no difference. Because many of you are already saved. Already believe in Jesus Christ. Our mission is to save those that are lost. There's too much times we are swapping, going to one another. Yeah. And forgetting that it's the sinners that need to be saved. Yeah. The ungodly that need to be converted. Yeah. Therefore, it's time we spend seeking souls and not seeking friendships. Yeah. I love you all with the love of the Lord. But you are already saved. You are already on the journey of following the Lord. There are those that have not yet tasted and seen that the Lord is good. That's who we are looking for. So pray for us. And pray with us. God bless you all. In Jesus name. We praise the name of Jesus. We praise him again. And we praise him again. Praise Jesus. Sir, I would just like to send greetings to Elder Jarrett. Sitting at the back, sir. Praise the Lord. God bless you. We'll talk later. Praise Jesus. Yes. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord He is worthy to be praised forevermore Let us lift up holy hands and one accord singing blessed be the name Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised forevermore. Let us Lift up holy hands, I want to call. Sing it, blessed be the name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Oh, blessed be the name. Thank you. 
Church, let us praise the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Praise the name of Jesus. We give God thanks for His goodness, His mercy. Praise God for being in, in this house. Praise God, where God's name is preached in season and not a season. Praise God, there are many temples that don't have on the name of Jesus. But we give God thanks that we have His name. Praise God that His presence is with us here. Praise God and that we have a friend, a precious friend, over oh, how we love. Praise the name of Jesus. This time we're just going to bow our heads. Praise God in reverence to God in Jesus' name. Eternal God and righteous Father, know God, thou King of kings and Lord of lords. Know God, how excellent is your name in all the earth, Lord God. For Lord God, there is no God like unto thee, Lord. Father, Lord God, we bless your name, Lord God. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord God, we bow down before your presence, Lord, because, Lord God, you are worthy to be praised. Lord God, from everlasting to everlasting, Lord God. Lord God, you are the first, Lord God, and you are the last, Lord Jesus. You are our hope, Lord God, for our tomorrow, Lord God. You are a rock, Lord God, no weary land, Lord God. You are shelter, Lord God, from every stormy storm. You are the God in whom we put our trust, Lord God. Lord God, we give you praise, Lord God, we give you honor, Lord God, because you are God all by yourself. Father God in Christ, as we come before your prince, Lord. Oh God, we give you thanks, Lord God, for 
this evening, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, your presence was here with us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, you have sealed this service, Lord God. Lord God, with your anointing, Lord God, of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for our presiding bishop, Lord God, for what has taken place today, Lord God. Father, I pray your best, Lord God, your servant continue, Lord God. The Lord, you walk with him, Lord God, you'll be with him, Lord Jesus. Lord God, you'll be his, his shield, Lord God, an exceedingly great reward. The Lord God, you'll be in shelter, Lord God, from every storm. The Lord God, you're protecting, Lord God, from the hands of the adversary, Lord God. Lord God, you promise in your word that upon this rock you'll build your church. Lord God, the gate of hell will not prevail, Lord God. You promise in your word, Lord God, touch not the Lord's anointed, Lord God. Lord God, and do his prophet no harm. Lord God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, you build a wall around, Lord God. The Lord, you protect him, Lord God. The Lord, you preserve him, Lord Jesus. Lord God, anoint him from the crown of his head right down to the sole of his feet, Lord God. Give him, Lord God, continue your fresh anointing. Lord God, the Lord, you have preached the word in season and out of season, Lord God. The Lord, you be the shepherd, Lord God, of this flock, Lord God. The Lord, you will lead beside the two waters, Lord Jesus. And even though we go through every valley, Lord God, Lord God, let him be the leader, Lord, I pray, that will take us through the valley, Lord God, that will take us through every red sea, that will take us through every fire and storm that the enemy lays upon us, Lord God. Lord God, we pray tonight, Lord God, that Lord, you will break down every eye, Lord Jesus. You will cast out every foe. That Lord God, you will wash it again. That Lord, we can be white in the snow. Lord God, bless your servant again, I pray, Lord God. Bless, oh God, the, 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 your people who are here, Lord God, who are called by your mighty name, Lord God. Lord God, give us one mind. Lord God, give us one spirit, Lord. Give us the one voice, Lord God. As it was on the day of Pentecost, Lord, that they had one mind, that they had one spirit, Lord. Lord God, to be, Lord God, the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord God, help us to speak the same things that become sound doctrine. Therefore, I pray you bless your people this moment in time, Lord. Lord God, we pray as we want to leave from this from, from this temple, Lord God, that your presence will go with us, Lord God, that Lord, you will direct us, oh God, in the path of righteous way, then say, Lord, continue to bless, Lord God, your people, Lord, continue to anoint them, Lord God, continue to wash us, Lord, continue to keep us, Lord God, in perfect peace, Lord, in Lobosha, Labasi, Lobosha, for your promise, your word, you will keep them, Lord, in perfect peace, whose heart and mind is stayed on thee. Please be bless, I pray, the fragrance of this convocation, Lord God. Continue to be with us, I pray. Knowing, Lord God, if we, if we got you on our side, Lord God, we shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, Lord God. Lord God, you will be the rock, Lord God, whom we depend upon. Therefore, keep us this day, we pray. And what's what you feel of action, Lord God, whether great or small, Lord God, we pray that you'll fail at the grant the blessing, Lord God. Bless the Holy Father, I pray, Lord God. Keep them, Lord, and preserve them, Lord. Bless and sanctify again, we pray. These mercy we ask. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah. Hear the Lord shut up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before we repeat the benediction, we do recognize that many have made a great sacrifice, traveled a long distance, praise God, and praise God. There's some refreshments that are put together for you, praise the Lord Jesus, that is here and is available and ready for you to either stay and refresh or take on your journey. It's up to you, praise God. But one thing I ask, don't go without it. Praise the Lord Jesus. So uh, asking that the, there'll be some around the back, some may have to go upstairs, but there's something here for you to take with you or to eat and fellowship with us. Praise God. In fact, let me just broaden it out. Everybody have something to get. Whether you live near or whether you live far, come and dine. The master call it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Praise God.
Praise God. And also, praise God, we are here again every day, morning and evening, from tomorrow right through to Thursday, giving God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. To him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. But now forevermore, in Jesus' name, amen.